Would they have done that? Who were they thinking? <coughs> In every single way, they were only thinking of one step. So I, I, I got to tell you guys something. This, and this, this made a disconnect for everybody from God. From this day forward, not from this day forward, from that day forward, I should say. When it came to men and women's relationships, no one's happy. Nobody. No one's ever self, no one's ever fulfilled. Oh, they think they are because men are only trying to have their own pleasure. And women are never happy. Why? Because it's all selfish love. It's all about me. It's not about the other. Ever. It's not about the other. It's all about me. What I want. What my needs are. My needs aren't being met. They never have to. Come on. I mean, it's all about that. Well, what about me? What about you? That's the only person people think of first. That wasn't our original nature, though. Our original nature was we naturally thought about the other. That was natural. And when you start work operating out of your original mind, you'll start thinking only that way. Do you know how hard it is to do that? Do you know how hard? it's so easy, actually? Brothers and sisters, I know that you're looking at it like easy. What? All you have to do is stop for just a moment. Just stop what you're doing. And ask yourself a few questions and you can write yourself so easy. Am I doing what's best for myself or am I doing what's best for others? Is this good for me or is this good for everybody? And if you ask this question, you will get an answer. God, is this what you want me to do? Or would you have me do something else? And if God doesn't answer the first time, he doesn't make a little effort. I've never had God hold me up and not tell me what he wants to tell me. First thing I know for sure, God loves me. He's on my side. He wants to do what's best for me. And if I truly seek out what God wants for me, he'll tell me. He'll tell me. He always has Uh, okay, a little exercise. Just to prove what I'm saying is true. Ready? Okay, every one of you, for just a second, I want you to think of yourselves. You're not, a, you're not a person. You're a radio. You only have two dials. The devil's channel and God's channel. You got it? Sit up straight. You're a radio. You're going you're gonna to receive. Yeah. Don't, don't. I, I want only the truth. Okay? Ooh, I got like this guy. He's like this. I got two antennas. Yeah. Woohoo! Alright. You got a big dial right here. Turn to the left. Come on, turn it to the left. Oh, come on. Turn to the left. Okay, that's the devil's channel. Okay, I'm gonna say that. Think about hold on. What's the devil saying to you right now? Don't say it out loud. You might hurt somebody. Hold on. Okay, now. Now turn it back to neutral. Thank you, Jesus. All right. All right, now turn it to God's channel. Turn it to the right. Turn it all the way. Turn it dial as far right as you can get it. All right, now what is that dial saying about Reverend Jackson when he's teaching you today? What is, that, what is God's channel saying about me? Am I telling you the truth? What does God say? Come on, speak. I want to hear what God's saying to you. What's God saying to you? Huh? It's a good lecture. <laughs> Okay, what's God saying to you? Stay awake and huh? Stay awake and listen. Awake and listen. <laughs> okay, what's God saying? What about my character? Am I good? What's God say about me? Does He have anything good to say about me? What is God saying to you about me? Please tell me. I want to know. 
I want to know what God says about me. Come on, give me a chance. You speak from the heart? I speak from the heart. What else? He loves you. Oh, you're so right about that. I love you. Oh, what else is God saying? Ah, right, okay. <laughs> Wait, we're not done. I want you to take, turn that dial back to neutral. Take a deep breath. <coughs> Turn that dial to the left again. Now what is the devil saying about me? What has the devil got to say about Reverend Jackson today? Am I teaching the truth or am I giving you a bunch of bull crap that you don't need to believe? Right. If he's full of himself, is he so, such an arrogant that's so he? How dare he? What is, it, what is the devil saying? Y'all help me out. I'm just listening to the devil myself right now. I mean, he's got all kinds of stuff to say. Come on, don't be afraid. I know it's not use talking. I know this is the devil. Tell me what the devil's saying. Oh, I'm just wasting your time. Stop. He needs to stop now. Oh, yeah, that's the devil. He's afraid, that's why. What it got to do about me? What's this got to do with you? They got nothing to do with you. You don't have this problem. You don't need to hear this message. Come on. Go with me. Let's go smoke some. I mean, uh, you know. <laughs> What's the devil got to say over here, guys? Somebody give me some of it. I want to hear it. It's okay. I've heard all the devil time. Even if you know, what are you going to do? Oh. So you know something. What you going to do about it? Oh, the devil's got an attitude. Huh? Oh, the slides are the <laughs> Even when he's telling the truth, he's got an attitude too. <laughs> what else? What else? What else is the devil saying? You see how easy it is to turn to me in? You guys who got something really evil to say about me, you're just being kind. Because I know what the devil really thinks about me. He ain't got nothing good to say about me. But God can't stop talking good about me. Y'all can't take it off his channel because he sucks. Anybody can do this. Everybody can do this. When you're in trouble, you got a problem, just go, um. Um. Hey, guys, that works that better. <sighs> Almost lunch time. Golly. Okay, the consequences of the fall. We're going to go through this pretty quick. I'm going to put that. I think y'all get it. Here's the consequences of the fall if you haven't figured it out. Instead of building that diet, that, that paradigm that I showed you about the three blessings, we built a paradigm built on the devil instead of God. It's his love that we multiply, it's his children that we bear, and it's his kingdom that we live in. I don't like it any more than you do, but that's the truth. He's the God of this world. Humanity procreates and gives birth to children of Satan. According to Jesus' own words, you are of your father the devil and it's just your father's desire that you seek to do. You are serpents, a brood of vipers. How are you, how are you to escape being sentenced to hell? And this was Jesus speaking to the holy men of his age, not the fallen people. This is the church. He's talking to the church leaders. Adam and Eve had they, excuse me, let 
by that again. Had Adam and Eve reached their full maturity and built a four-position foundation centered on God, they would have created this world. God's sovereignty would have been the result. They would have born children of God's lineage. And instead of building the kingdom of hell, they would have established a kingdom of heaven on earth and in the spirit. Did you know there's no such thing? God didn't, God didn't make hell. Did you know that? We did. That's our fault. A man and woman was never supposed to enter a spirit world that had hell as its title. But we created that spiritual hell because the spirit world is a perfect place that perfectly, it, what it does is it creates a place that is perfect for the people that are going there. You understand that? It doesn't do anything but that. It just creates a place for you. And if you've got the spirit of death, then there you go. If you're a... Anyway. So we have these... You know, while still a mature Adam and Eve fell and formed the four position foundation center on the death of Satan. And one of them had been suffering. Remember I told you about the God of this world? He's the ruler of this world. Scripture mentions it over and over and over again. Satan's activities in human history. Let me tell you about God and the devil's been busy. All the devil needs is you to create a common base with him and he gets an object partner and all hell breaks loose. He works with evil spirits in the spirit world, and they influence you. How many of you ever been sitting there having just a perfectly normal day, and everything was fine, and then you got an idea, and you went, what the heck? Where did that come from? Ugh! Right? Right? Ain't nobody, everybody, right? That's what that's going on, right there, what I just showed you. Right? Listen. This ought to give you power, and this ought to encourage you, because you know what that means? It's not you. It's not you. That's something coming from somewhere else. Understand? A lot of times we get confused by that stuff, and it's like, why am I having these evil thoughts? That's not, that's not you understand what I'm saying now? That's not you. That's this stuff going on, these evil spirits meddling in your life. That's what that is. That's how it works. They did. They work with a person on the, on the physical world. And they tempt us to do all kinds of manner of stuff. That's the only excuse for stuff like this right here. Adolf Hitler and six million Jews dying. There's no other excuse worthy of that. There's no, no way to excuse such stuff. No, I don't think a human being's got that kind of capacity. By themselves. Actually, I pray that what I wish to be true is true. Sometimes. And this evilness manifests itself in some of the ugliest ways. Jeff Reed, Donalders of the earth, and evil people, bombing people. Killing anything and everything and may have a no respect for life. You know, that, that's very true. Listen to this. A lot of people believe Jesus would come to die. Look at that scripture right there. Luke, Luke, Luke 22 3. A lot of people say Jesus came to die. Jesus came to die. If that's true, then how come the guy who betrayed Jesus? Do not right. Not according to the scripture. If God told Jesus came to die, then how come does Satan enter Judas and he betrays Jesus? Is Satan doing the work of God now? Devil's at work all the time. All the time. This is what it says in Ephesians, Ephesians 6, 12. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against...
against principalities, against the powers, against the world's rulers, okay, of this present darkness, against spirits, a host of wicked, wickedness in high places. We are dealing with an evil spirit world led by an evil angel who's selfish beyond comprehension. Romans 3.23 Since all have sinned. You know what the wages of sin are? Huh? The Bible says the wages of sin are death. Not big sins. Not the bad sins, the big bad sins. Not the unforgivable sins. Every sin. The wages of sin is death. And if you say you're not a sinner, you're a liar. And you make God a liar. And by the way, uh, second gen, I love y'all, but you're sinners too. I'm not happy about that. It's just the truth. And, if, and, and, and I believe one of the worst things we could do, I could do, is tell you that you're something different. Why? Because if you go around thinking that you're perfect, well, you're going to be in for a big fall because you're not perfect. And that's just setting you up for failure. A terrible failure. It, it just totally messes everybody up. Oh, you are you're born perfect. You were born special and everything. It, well, by the way, that's true. You were born special. You were given a precious gift like no other human being's ever received. But don't mistake.